Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and welcome to the online workshop introducing the LNG truck loading station in Erythusa. My name is Natasha Hadzi-Antoniou, and I will be your digital hostess for the day. On behalf of everyone here at DESFA, I would like to thank you for showing up such a keen interest to participate today in this online workshop and to apologize for the short delay we had due to some technical reasons. As many of you know, DESFA is paving the way to a new small-scale LNG era for Greece and Southeastern Europe by creating a pilot truck loading station and making Greece a supply and distribution hub for the wider region. This new truck loading station, which is located in the islet of Revithusa, is going to provide the possibility to off-grid areas to have access to natural gas, and it will also enable LNG bunkering and the use of LNG as marine fuel. This project is co-financed by funds of the European Regional Development Fund of the European Union through the operational program Competitiveness, Entrepreneurship and Innovation in the context of the NSRF 2014-2020, as well as by national resources. So today's workshop is a good opportunity to learn more about this pilot facility. For the next two hours, my distinguished colleagues will speak about the services offered the regulatory framework, the technical, as well as the operational aspects. During this time, please feel free to submit your questions through the chat that you see on your screen, and we will have adequate time to address all of your questions or concerns during the last session of the workshop. Um, unfortunately, um, Mrs. Galli, our CEO, had some uh, technical difficulties to connect, so I will uh, pass the floor directly to, to the first panel of today's workshop. And I would like to introduce uh, Evstathia Nyarhu, Project Manager, and Ioannis Karayanis, LNG Terminal Department Manager, who will be presenting the technical aspects of the truck loading terminal and transit ports, the specification for LNG trucks and drivers, as well as the process to reach the facility. Please, the stage is yours. Thank you, Natasha. I will share my screen. Okay, and it's okay. Uh, good yes, afternoon. you can see it. Okay. <laughs> uh, good afternoon to all participants. Uh, in uh, this presentation, we will try to answer the questions uh, received uh, at this in the previous period and to clarify technical items related to the trucks trailers in order to be compatible with uh, truck loading station characteristics. Uh, in this table, the first one, we can see main characteristics uh, of uh, the station. Uh, the station uh, is uh, an uh, one uh, bay uh, loading, one loading bay, uh, semi-automated uh, with uh, a max flow rate uh, 100 uh, cubic meter per hour and operational flow rate from 0 to 100 percent. Uh, maximum working pressure is 10 bars and uh, the operational pressure uh, is between 3 and 5 bars. Uh, in case uh, the pressure in uh, the drug vessel is higher than uh, five bars, uh, depressurization procedure uh, will be applied. Uh, here I want to point out that uh, the truck loading station will not cover uh, cool down services and uh, inerting services. Uh, that means that the truck vessel should have a temperature lower than uh, minus 130 uh, degrees. Uh, as concerns the levels of uh, O2, CO2, water vapor, or other contaminants, the operator will carry checks, and in case uh, uh, above the limits, uh, the truck uh, will be rejected. Uh, all these uh, uh, checks uh, will be carried out uh, uh, in uh, the port uh, before the a truck trailer uh, enter uh, to ferry. Uh, the, coming back to the characteristics of the station, uh, uh, a weight bridge 
uh, uh, will be in order to uh, wait the LNG. And uh, also a gas chromatograph uh, will be installed upstream uh, the station uh, in order to analyze the components of uh, the loading LNG. Uh, as concerns the connection between uh, trailer and uh, uh, station, uh, we have two connections, uh, a three inches uh, hose for the liquid, for LNG, and a two inches hose for the gas, uh, the bog. Sorry. Okay. Uh, as concerns uh, the, the access to Evithusa, uh, this will be by ferry from uh, Elefsina port in uh, the beginning and uh, later on from uh, Perama Megarida port and uh, uh, from uh, Almira Jetty uh, after the completion of their upgrade. It is obvious that uh, the closer we are to Evithusa, the more slots will be available. Uh, the access to the access to Elefsina port uh, will be exclusively through Olivia Odos Highway and uh, uh, Canelopoulou, Okiranidos and Gela Streets of the municipality of Elefsina. For the transportation uh, of uh, LNG from uh, Rithusa Terminal, uh, other code the agreement for the international carriage of dangerous goods by road, and uh, uh, TPED, the Transportal Pressure Equipment Directive 2010-35, uh, uh, will be applied. Both refer to manufacturers, importers, distributors, operators, and owners of uh, transportal pressure equipment used for transportation of dangerous goods by road and railway. Uh, ADR and TPD uh, are adapted to the Greek legislation uh, by common ministerial decision. Uh, according to ADR, LNG classification is called 3F, uh, class 2. Uh, based on the latest revision of ADR 2021, the transportation company and the operator are obliged to allocate a consultant for safety transportation. Furthermore, Directives uh, 2014-103 and 2014-68 are applied for the design of uh, transportable pressure equipment and uh, are also adapted to the Greek legislation by common ministerial decision. In addition, in the design of the cryogenic vessels, including piping, instrumentation, etc., EN, ISO standards, and other international ones are applied. As concerning the main characteristic of the, of the vessels, this can be uh, of two kinds, uh, means uh, uh, wo uh, with maximum working pressure three bars and seven bars. The design uh, should be according to uh, ADR and TPD, and uh, the isolation type uh, between uh, inner and uh, outer vessels uh, should be M should be MLI super insulation plus vacuum. The tail weight uh, for the three bars uh, vessels uh, should be uh, 12.3 tons, and for the seven uh, bars uh, vessels, 13.45 uh, tons. The payload, according to the Greek legislation, uh, should be um, 22.2 tons. Uh, for the three pressure, the three bar uh, pressure uh, vessels and 21.05 for the seven bar uh, vessels. And the gross weight, uh, 42 tons, according to the Greek legislation. European legislation 
uh, in different uh, European countries uh, um, are um, more or less the same, uh, with uh, small uh, differences. Uh, the maximum semi-trail length uh, should be 14.04 uh, uh, meters and the maximum width uh, 2 meters uh, 55. Uh, 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 concerning the inner vessel, uh, the design code, of course, is the ADR PPE and uh, uh, EN. Uh, the material should be stainless steel 304. Uh, the design temperature uh, minus uh, 196 uh, degrees. Radiography 100%. Inner buff 7. And uh, the piping between inner and uh, outer vessel uh, stainless steel. Uh, and uh, should have security valves uh, three. Okay. Uh, as concerned the outer vessel, the design code is again ADR TPD, isolation uh, uh, super insulation plus vacuum, material uh, carbon steel or stainless steel. And the outer diameter, uh, the same uh, as with the maximum width of the vessel. As concern uh, piping uh, and uh, instrumentation, uh, the track vessel uh, uh, should have a temperature uh, indicator, a pressure manometer. Uh, range uh, from uh, 0 to 20 bars, uh, level gauge uh, range uh, from 0 to 100 percent, vacuum sensor, and, uh, em and three emergency buttons. Uh, track loading station is designed to receive uh, signals transmitted from uh, track sensor. Uh, in case of lack of such kind of sensors, uh, uh, the tracks uh, are acceptable and uh, a different procedure will be applied by the operator. Uh, as concern uh, uh, accessories and uh, all other systems, uh, electrical systems, uh, earth systems, uh, the uh, ADR and uh, TPD uh, regulations uh, should be followed. Uh, the test and inspection requirements uh, are, are uh, first of all, a third party inspection from uh, an accredited uh, company. Uh, all certification uh, should be in accordance with uh, European regulation. Uh, vacuum test, uh, hydraulic test and sealing, operating test, and uh, uh, PNID diagram or flow diagram uh, should be uh, inside track and issued uh, during the compatibility uh, phase uh, uh, with, along with all other uh, uh, required uh, documents. Uh, for the drivers, uh, they have to cover uh, other requirements uh, and uh, be certified uh, accordingly and uh, uh, especially have uh, uh, special training uh, for LNG. Uh, the first loading to uh, Vithusa terminal uh, will be considered as a training. Um, this was a brief presentation. Uh, all aspects, uh, uh, all technical aspects uh, concerning the compatibility uh, between uh, tracks and uh, the station uh, will be, uh, as well as uh, operation procedures, uh, will be in the operation manual uh, as appendix to the track loading code. Um, you are requested uh, for questions, uh, if any, in order to clarify more uh, items. And uh, I pass the floor to Mr. Karagiannis.
Mr. Karagiannis, you're on mute. Please unmute your microphone. Good afternoon to all. Sorry for uh, <laughs> this um, for the big problem. Uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, okay, some additional information about um, uh, about uh, uh, the provision of this uh, service, uh, fatals, uh, everything. Uh, about uh, the term that I want uh, to inform uh, uh, all of you that uh, the operation of this uh, will be seven days per week. Uh, the window that uh, we will operate uh, will be from eight uh, uh, to uh, eight. That means 12 hours from eight morning to eight night. Um, for the rest, about the peak uh, loading capacity and uh, about uh, the number of uh, loading bays uh, freight as uh, before, uh, okay, our target is uh, to duplicate uh, the base, uh, but uh, for uh, this uh, period, uh, we have estimated that uh, the maximum uh, uh, truck uh, loadings uh, annually uh, will be around uh, 4,000. Uh, okay, the next. Now, uh, to achieve a uh, revisosa terminal, okay, from uh, at the first uh, period, uh, we uh, uh, come from uh, Elessina Port uh, with a ferry special dedicated uh, for this um, uh, transfer. Uh, the maximum trucks uh, on board uh, per transfer will be two. Uh, time slots uh, per day. Uh, we calculate around uh, 10. Um, about the duration of um, uh, the test load uh, is uh, around uh, four uh, hours for uh, the two uh, tracks uh, that I tell uh, before. Uh, the, the trip away from uh, Elersina to Revithusa is one hour. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the target uh, to change, uh, sorry, the target uh, to change um, uh, the ports uh, is uh, to minimize this uh, trip uh, time, to minimize the duration. Uh, and uh, how we have um, uh, shown that uh, the way trip uh, uh, from uh, Perama Megaridos is around uh, 20 minutes, and uh, the uh, way trip uh, from the third uh, port, uh, uh, Almira, is around uh, 10 minutes. That means uh, we, uh, we can uh, increase uh, the time slots, uh, increase uh, the number of trucks uh, that um, we can um, uh, load. Uh, for uh, the first year, uh, the loading duration uh, time will be around uh, one hour. Uh, we will see all the technical uh, issues and uh, we think that uh, this will be the time, uh, the loading time. Uh, Nothing uh, more uh, or uh, nothing uh, else uh, I have not uh, to tell you and to inform you, but uh, uh, if you have uh, any questions, uh, you need uh, any clarification, uh, we are always at your uh, disposal. Thanks again, and uh, I wish the best. Uh, thank you both, uh, Mr. Karagiannis and Mrs. Nyarhu, for your uh, presentations. Um, we already have received uh, quite a few questions, so I will encourage everyone to send their questions uh, in the chat box. Uh, moving on to the next panel, I would like to, to call on stage uh, George Dumuras, regulation expert, Christos Maragos Belbas, asset remuneration analyst, and Dimitris Kouras, contracts and customer operations department manager, to join us and present the basic track loading service and the elements included, along with the regulatory framework, access rules, and tariffs. Gentlemen, please, the floor is yours. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Yorgos Zulmuras. I'm the Division of Strategy and Development of DESPA. And I will make a short presentation regarding the access rules uh, of this new service provided by, by DESPA. Uh, then Mr. Jesus Maragos and the Mediscuras will follow with the tariff part and uh, framework agreement part. So uh, before going to the... Okay. So before starting with the presentation, let me give you a, a quick background the regulatory framework. Perhaps many of you know that uh, DESPA in mid-December uh, 21 submitted to RAI the proposal for the, for the access rules. So it was an amendment in the network code. Um, this proposal was set by RAI in public consultation from mid-January until mid-February. And then uh, this, many of you submitted comments and uh, we are very thankful for, for that. We took all these uh, comments, many of them were accepted, and we uh, formed our final submission to RAI, which was uh, sent uh, some days ago. So all the provisions for this new service are described in a new chapter. It's chapter 11A of the code. Uh, there you can find more or less more than 95% of uh, the necessary information about this new service. It will be a new regulated service, separate and distinct from the already offered by this one. Um, there is no discrimination. Anyone will have access to this uh, to this new service. Of course, um, someone must uh, previously have become registered in the RISE and NGS registry. It's a common step for all other services provided by this one. And of course, as a new service, there is a provision for a specific new guarantee, uh, which for uh, this first period is uh, uh, set at the value of 20,000 euros. Going a little uh, deep dive in this, in this service. Uh, okay. Um, what we, we must mention is that the provision of the service will take place through uh, track loading time slots. And what it is a time slot, it is um, it is actions that provided by VESPA. The time slot includes all actions provided by VESPA. It is the inspection of the certification documents in the transport, uh, certification of the driver, certification of the truck, the announcement of the, uh, of the time slot. Uh, it uh, includes also the sea transportation from the transit port to Revithusa terminal and back to the transit port. Uh, the time slot also includes, and this is the core business, the main, the main part of the service, the access to the truck loading station, the specific location at Trevithusa Terminal. And of course, um, uh, the service also includes um, any required measurements, uh, issuance of bill, and things like that. So all these actions uh, offered by DESPA is part of the, of the truck loading service. Uh, what is not part, as uh, Ms. Nyarko said, is the cooling down service. So at this first stage, uh, DESPA will not provide uh, a cool down service. And uh, it's up to, to the users to, to ensure that their truck will meet the chemical composition and temperature uh, margins set in the, in the LNG truck loading manual that will be available uh, the next days by DESPA. And regarding the, the quantities and how a truck loading user may find the necessary quantities to fill his truck with LNG, uh, we see three options. Option, option one, which uh, is the, the, the simplest, uh, is that the truck loading user is also an LNG user and has already stored quantities in the terminal. In this case, the truck loading user uses his own uh, stored quantities and uh, fill uh, his own truck. In case the truck loading user is not an LNG uh, user and has no quantities, of course, uh, at Revithus uh, tanks, in this case, he must agree bilaterally with an LNG user uh, in order uh, the second to, to supply him with the, with the necessary quantities. Uh, that's why we will not have any participation in this, uh, in this agreement. It will be a bilateral agreement and will not uh, develop, a, let's say, a platform or something like that to, to bring these two uh, users together. 
Uh, third option is that the drug loading user is an LNZ user, but has not quantities stored this specific day at the terminal. In this case, uh, the simplest way is to perform an LNZ transaction, just like all the, transact the LNZ transactions uh, described in the code. It's uh, in Article 78. Uh, and uh, with this LNZ transaction acquires in the tank the necessary quantities from an LNZ user that uh, has the, uh, the LNZ stored. As we said, uh, the, the, the provision of the service uh, requires uh, time slots, and uh, time slots will be reserved uh, by the truck loading users um, after DESFA announced the all available uh, time slots for the next year. Uh, in order for DESFA to uh, make uh, available the list of uh, the truck of the time slots for the next year, it's necessary to take into account some parameters. And of course, one of the parameters is the duration of the time slot. As uh, Mr. Karajans and Ms. Nyarko said previously, we estimate that uh, when, while we will use LFC NAPOT, the estimated time for the time slots uh, for this first period will be approximately four hours. Uh, and this uh, time is uh, derived uh, from the transportation time with the ferry, uh, from the loading time at, at the station, at the truck loading station, and of course by the duration time, uh, but the, by the time of, uh, of the certification checks and uh, things like that. So that's what takes into account all these parameters, defines the time slot duration, and then uh, taking also into account things like uh, the demand estimation, the maintenance program, and things like that, makes available uh, the list of the time slots for the next year. That, this step will take place uh, when this service will arrive the next year by November 20. Of course, for the first uh, year, we'll have, we will have some uh, um, specific provisions. From the next day, from uh, November 21st, TLS users would have an active framework agreement, that's a prerequisite, will be able to book um, the available uh, time slots until day D minus one at 13 p.m. on one in the morning. So uh, let's see it as an open calendar. Uh, and a window opens at uh, November 21st, and truck loading users are able to book uh, until uh, some hours before the uh, the day that uh, they want to to use the time slot, it's at uh, 13 p.m. Uh, in the new day, D minus one. This process will take place through an, uh, an electronic uh, information system, so, so it will be an electronic process. And of course, it will be a first come, first served basis. So meaning that if someone uh, has submitted a guarantee, has an active uh, framework agreement, uh, and there is an available time slot he wants to book, uh, if he uh, submits the request, he will uh, book uh, the time slot. What is important to clarify here is that uh, booking of the time slots will follow uh, a sequence within its day. So we start from the first available of the day, and then we can book the next available. So we do not want to have gap in uh, in booked time slots, and the reason for that is as you may understand that we do not want to have half empty or half filled uh, ferries going from the port to Rebithusa and then back. This will uh, increase a lot the, the cost of the provided of the, of the service, and we want to, to avoid that. So in order to keep this uh, cost low enough, uh, we, um, uh, we followed this process for this uh, sequence in, uh, in booking of the time slots. Um, after the, the, the time slot reservation, the reservation of a time slot, this uh, time slot is allocated to the user and is removed from the list. So the next TLS user, and of course the same TLS user, must book the next one, the next available. Uh, and, and this goes on for, for each day of, uh, of the year. Um, and we must not forget, of course, that uh, this process is binding for the users, meaning that uh, if someone books uh, 
a time slot, he must use it or uh, otherwise he will have to pay for it. After the, uh, the reservation process, uh, on day D minus one, so one day before the, the provision of the, of the service from this part, uh, the PLS user and the LZ user who, who supplies him with the quantities must submit a, a nomination, a, track load, a, a nomination for this self specific, distinct, separate nomination. This will take place at uh, 15. Uh, in PM three in in afternoon of day D minus one, it's the same uh, time with all nomination also for for the rest of our system. Uh, and after the submission of this nomination by both the track loading user and the user, uh, that's what checks the validity of the nomination. And if everything is okay, meaning the guarantees, uh, the LNG quantity of the LNG user. Uh, that the nomination was submitted by a valid representative, things like that. That's what confirms the loaded nomination. Only in case of rejection, only in case of rejection, uh, the users will have a second chance uh, uh, until 16 of uh, day D minus uh, one, four in the afternoon, to submit a second uh, nomination, but only in case of rejection of the initial one. Uh, what uh, is also important to mention here is that after this process and after the, the, the confirmation of the nominations, the track loading user uh, will have to declare to VESFA through an electronic uh, process the name of the driver and the vehicle registration plate of the truck that will arrive uh, next day at, uh, at the port uh, for him. So this is a, a necessary step in order to match the driver, the truck, the time slot, and the truck loading user uh, in order to, to, to give him access to, to go to Robithus and to, to fill the truck with LNG. And a final, uh, uh, a final slide from my side regarding the, the time slots and the assignment of them. There is also the, the possibility for a track loading user who has booked already uh, a time slot, but does not want to, to, to use it anymore, to, to, to assign uh, this time slot to another track loading user. Um, this is an assignment that uh, uh, transfers all the rights and the responsibilities and obligations for uh, the initial track loading user to the second one. Uh, and of course, the two, the two users, the two parties, must uh, uh, inform VESPA through an electronic uh, process uh, up until to 13 uh, p.m. Day D minus one. It's the same time as it was for the booking of the, of the time slots. And of course, VESPA, if everything is okay, meaning the guarantees, things like that, if VESPA agrees the, the assignment and then the, the time slot is assigned from track loading user one to uh, track load truck loading user number two. Um, that's all from my side. Uh, I would like to thank all of you, both for being here today, but also for submitting uh, questions and uh, remarks in the public consultation. It was very useful for us in order to redraft our proposal today. I will pass the floor to Mr. Maragos for his uh, part with, uh, for the tariffs. Um, thank you. Thank you, Yorgos. Good afternoon uh, from my side too. I will be briefly presenting the basic tariff principles and uh, applicable tariff level as proposed to the regulator by this fund. So uh, the applicable tariff methodology and the level of the tariffs, uh, of course, is set by uh, this following uh, an approval by RAE. Uh, the tariff uh, is in the form of a fixed amount per time slot, including all the elements that comprise the service. For instance, the necessary safety checks, the measurement, the transportation by the ferry, the loading service itself, and so on. Uh, however, the, the tariff excludes the commodity cost. 
for setting the tariff level, DESFA has proposed to the regulator using a hybrid model of a cost-based and a market-based approach. Uh, basically, this means that the cost-based approach provides a tariff based on cost recovery, while the market-based approach provides a range of the relevant tariffs for the service to be competitive to other regional facilities. And of course, to enable the development of this new small-scale market in Greece. Uh, the, the hybrid tariff model uh, provides a good trade-off between the above-mentioned two approaches, meaning the cost-based and the market-based approach, and will ensure a long-term cost recovery, competitiveness of the service, and will stimulate the demand for the small-scale energy service in Greece. Uh, according to DESFA's proposal, and of course subject to the regulator's approval, the level of the tariff for the first year of operation for 2022 is not anticipated to exceed 700 euros per time slot. So I will now be giving the floor to Mr. Skouras, who will be presenting some operational aspects of the service, and of course, if any one of you has any questions on the above, feel free to, to post them in the chat. Thank you. Hello all from my side and thanks again for participating in our workshop. Uh, I would like to briefly describe the, the, the prerequisites that George has mentioned about being a user of the TLS and submitting a guarantee in order to be able to participate to receive the service. So uh, as a first step, interested parties must sign a TLS, Track Loading Service Framework Agreement with TESFA in order to use it. Uh, this is uh, in the same logic we have with the LNG and the Transmission Framework Agreements, meaning that they are submitted to the regulator and approved cannot be altered or changed in any way and accepted by the users in order in, uh, the potential users in order to become a TLS user and be able to uh, receive the service. The TLS framework agreement is valid for an indefinite period, meaning uh, we don't have to renew it. Uh, it doesn't stop uh, unless uh, one of the parties or, or both uh, one of the parties or both uh, uh, agree to request to cancel the, the framework agreement, and there are no costs associated with its conclusion. Uh, this is again with the same logic with the transmission and LNG framework agreement we have in place, uh, giving the opportunity to a user to, to sign a framework agreement, and as long as there is no activity from the user side, then there's no financial obligation. When there, there is need to receive the service, the user must provide the relevant guarantee. So briefly, the steps that need to be taken by its potential user are described here in the bottom of the page. As a first step, you need to register to rise registry. You need to become a Christis throat is right, an NNGS registry user, user of the National Natural Gas Registry. So all natural and legal entities, member of RISE registry, are eligible. So as a first step, we need to take this project with our good colleagues at RISE. Uh, and as soon as you have the, the RISE decision or at hand, you may proceed to the second step and submit an application to DESHA. Uh, for those of you, of you who are already user, the users either of transmission or LNG, the process is the exact same process. You need to submit uh, a set of legalization documents are for us for the transmission and the LNG framework agreement to VESFA. Uh, we will, of course, have, as for the other services, detailed guides on our website. And of course, you can communicate directly with us so we can guide you through this process. Um, then DESFA shall examine the application within five working days. Of course, uh, if additional information is needed, then the applicant has to submit it within 10 working days. 
Once the application is considered complete, then DESFA calls the applicant to sign physically or digitally within five working days. Uh, the, the framework agreement can be either signed physically or digitally as long as the, the digital signature complies with our uh, requirements, meaning that they're included in the EU TLS, just trust the list of service providers. Okay, as soon as there is a TLS framework agreement in place and has been signed, then the TLS user must submit a guarantee to ensure the fulfillment of the TLS user's financial obligations towards DESPA. As already stated, this guarantee needs to be submitted only before the, the commencement of operation of the user. The amount of guarantee is a fixed amount, regardless of the, the activity, regardless of the time slots booked, and it is set at 20,000 euros. The guarantee can, can be either cash deposit or a letter of bank guarantee. We have prepared a, a small diagram to, to, just to explain the, the, the deadlines for the submission of the guarantee. So assuming that you need to book a time slot on the day D, here, uh, obviously at the deadline mentioned that by one in the noon, then five days before, by 12 o'clock of day minus five, you have to bring the guarantee either in the, cast, in the form of the cash deposit or in the form of the letter of bank guarantee. Then, as George described, the, the time slot application and the nomination have to be approved and the, the loading, the services to be provided will be upon day, day, day plus one. So this is, that, that's it for my side. Uh, and I, I will pass the floor to, to Natasha. Thank you, Dimitri. And thank you all uh, three gentlemen for uh, the very interesting presentations. Uh, I have to admit that we have an overwhelming uh, number of questions. Thank you for the vivid interest. Uh, let me just uh, note one thing here regarding the um, regulatory framework that it has not yet been um, approved by the regulatory authority of uh, energy, but I'm sure this is something that uh, perhaps our speakers uh, will uh, that's uh, upon uh, in the course of uh, this uh, workshop. Um, so our last speaker for the day, uh, again, Dimitri Skouras, uh, Contracts and Customer Operations Department uh, Manager. Uh, Dimitri will speak about the operational aspect, the time slot process, as well as the communicational and operational procedures of the facility. So Dimitri, the floor is yours again. Okay, I think we are all able to see my screen now. Uh, at the third part of our workshop, we'll describe the operational aspects of the track loading service, the time slot reservation process, and the operational procedures. Um, just to, to, to introduce into this presentation, we have uh, broken down the whole business process into sub-processes and uh, thought in this way we could present in a really understandable way uh, how things will be working. The first part, the first sub-process is time slot reservation. We announce the list of available time slots before the, the start of the year. And the user submits the guarantee before the day of the time slot reservation and after this announcement of the available time slots. Then the, the TLS user can submit the time slot reservation application for loading on day D. At, at, at the same time, there is a possibility to assign the approved time slot to another TLS user and the, the time slot reservation application or its assignment are uh, approved by DESFA, and then uh, the, the, this information is passed on to the TLS user. After that, DESFA updates the list of available time slots that is then universally viewed by all uh, interested stakeholders. In more detail, 
uh, until November 20th of each year, DESFA announces the list of all available time slots for the following year. In order to define the offer time slot, as George already mentioned, DESFA takes into account information such as the maintenance plan of the facility, the demand estimations, the duration of the time slots, uh, e.g. Con- where, uh, which port uh, is available at that time, uh, so on and so forth. Any available time slot of the year, why, can be reserved by interested TAS users during the interval starting from November 21st, the next day of the announcement we have already mentioned, and up to one at the noon of day, day minus one, meaning day D is a delivery day. Uh, as already discussed, there is an amount, uh, a guarantee that needs to be submitted, uh, regardless of the TLS activity, at the 20,000 euros we just mentioned. A cash deposit or electric bank guarantee can be used and can be submitted five days before the time slot application. Time slots reserved by a TLS user can be assigned to other TLS users through bilateral agreements. The assigner user transfers all rights and obligations associated with the time slot to the the assignee user. You have to submit a joint application up to one at the norm of the minus one, subject to BESFA's approval. Uh, obviously, BESFA is not involved in this bilateral transaction, and the assignee must have submitted the guarantee of 10,000 10, euros according to the relevant deadlines we have just mentioned. The second sub process is the loading nomination. Since we have uh, the, the time slots reserved and approved, then the TLS user must submit a loading nomination by day minus one at three in at the noon. There, the time slot in the LNG user who shall provide the supply in the LNG shall be declared, and then the LNG user shall, shall equally uh, declare the time slot and the TLS user uh, that the LNG user shall supply. This nomination is matched by DESFA, and if the LNG user has sufficient LNG reserve, it is approved, and both the LNG and the TLS user are uh, informed about this approval. In parallel, on this part of the, the slide, there is a need for the TLS user to request for the certification of the LNG truck and the drivers they are about to use. And DESFA maintains, is responsible for maintaining the certified LNG trucks and the certified truck drivers register. From this register, from this exact register, there is a need by the TLS user to declare for each specific time slot uh, approved uh, the truck and the driver that shall appear, shall show up at the terminal to load. Breaking down this process, the TLS user must submit a loading nomination for its time slot by three the noon of the minus one indicating the unique ID of the time slot and the EIC of the LNG user that shall supply the LNG. LNG users supplying the LNG must submit within the same deadline, meaning the three, the minus one, a loading nomination, indicating the unique ID of the time slot and the EIC of the TLS user that has booked the time slot. If the two loading nominations are matched and if the LNG user has sufficient LNG reserve, the loading nomination is confirmed by DESPA. In case of rejection, and in that case only, the LNG user and the TLS user whose nomination has been rejected may submit a new nomination until four in the noon of the minus one, and this will be evaluated by DESPA by five of the minus one. If a TLS user is also an LNG user and has sufficient LNG reserves in the terminal, this may be used for the loading of the truck. However, this, the process will be again the same, regardless uh, of uh, being the TLS user, the same entity with the LNG user, meaning that the, the nomination of its counterparty, the 
the LNG user and the PLS user will be again uh, carried out. If the TLS user does not have its own LNG reserves, then the supply of the LNG quantity must be agreed bilaterally with an LNG user as confirmed by TESFA. This is uh, obviously a business as usual LNG transaction uh, and TESFA is not involved in this transaction at all apart from the part of confirmation. TLS user must submit a declaration by nine at night of the minus one by selecting from this certified trucks and drivers register for its time slot, reserve the truck and driver that shall show up for loading. So uh, to make that a little bit clearer, there is a, the process of TLS user submitting requests to VESFA for the certification of the truck and the certification of the driver and provide all required information for the process of approval. These are all, of course, will be clearly uh, stated in the, in the relevant manual of VESFA that shall be published. Uh, then VESFA checks the technical and physical compatibility of the trucks with TLS specifications, the certificates of the trucks according to the ADR code and the applicable legislation, and the driver's certificates and training. VESFA then is responsible for maintaining and updating to register the register of the certified LNG trucks and the register of certified truck drivers. The requirements for the trucks and the drivers to be allowed to the registers and hence to load LNG from the PLF shall be detailed as already stated in the relevant manual. As long as we have a, a, an approved time slot reservation and an approved loading load, then the, the truck and the driver are allowed to arrive at the port. Upon arrival, they are, they are obliged to provide their certifications for the truck and the driver and the approved uh, time slot and nomination. This first employee at the port will check the certifications and match the declaration of the truck and the driver. In case this is negative, access to the future shall be denied. In case this check is positive, uh, then if the driver has uh, showed up according to the, the, the schedule provided in the manual, then the, the ESFAS employee confirms the boarding of the ship and the dri truck driver in turn confirms the boarding of the ship, enter the, the truck, the truck enters the ship and goes to a refusal. In case there is an early or late arrival, then VESFA has the right to check if there are available time slots within the same day. And in case the, there is, proposes the slot to the driver that uh, needs to confirm that they accept uh, this uh, counter proposal and confirm the boarding of the ship and transfer to the diffusion. In case uh, there is a, an early or late arrival, but there is not any available time slots within the same day, or the proposal there is, and the proposal is rejected by the driver, then access to the diffusion is denied. In more detail, for the arrival at the port, Upon arrival at the port, the necessary documents of the truck and its driver shall be inspected. Visual check of the general good condition of the truck shall be performed. The approved loading nomination shall be confirmed uh, so as to, to, to see if the, this is the corresponding truck driver for that specific time slot. The time of arrival shall be documented. And the LNG truck and driver that will arrive at the port for that specific time slot shall not deviate from the ones declared by nine o'clock of the minus one. It is then confirmed by both parties that the LNG truck and the driver shall enter the SFAS ferry to be transported from the port to the terminal. In case of very already arrived at the port, this one has the right to propose an, an alternative time slot within the same day, if available. 
in case the proposed time slot is accepted by the drivers in the name of the TAS user, the service is provided within the new time slot. In case the proposed time slot is rejected by the driver, then the service is not provided and is, of course, charged according to applicable tariff, as uh, already George has mentioned. In case it is not feasible for VESFA to propose an alternative time slot within the same day, then the service is not provided and it is again charged according to the applicable tariff. Finally, once the truck and the driver ha have passed all the appropriate and applicable inspections, they are transferred to the terminal. The, the, the truck and driver move on to the, to the loading bay and proceed with the technical inspection of the truck conducted by TESFA's operator. If the inspection is negative, the service is not provided and the truck returns back to the port with, uh, within the next route. If it is positive, the TESFA's operator and the LNG truck driver confirm that they are ready, to, uh, ready for the truck to load. This has operator performs the loading and calculates the final quantity loading. This and issues the bill of materials. The driver receive, receives, the, receives this information and the TLS user and the LNG users are notified for the final quantity loading. This, of course, and the next step to, uh, proceeds with invoicing. And there ends the, our process. In more detail on the terminal, upon arrival at the terminal, the truck and the driver shall move to the bay. Technical and safety checks for the overall performance of the LNG truck and driver shall be performed according to the manual. The truck, of course, is mobilized on the TLF platform, the truck loading facility platform on the weight bridge, and the indicative checks are performed, some of which are the for example, just for indicative checks, the equipment status, e.g., are there the appropriate fire extinguishers, the personal protective equipment of the driver, and so on and so forth, and the, pre the appropriate preloading checks, the disconnection of the battery, the connection with the loading facility systems, the earthing, the instrumentation leak, the LNG and oil of gas hoses, and then the vessel temperature and pressure check are. Uh, uh, performed, and as uh, uh, Faye has already mentioned, LNG truck vessels shall arrive in all conditions and, and the appropriate uh, pressure at the moment the cooling down is not, service is not provisioned. Upon performance of these checks, this operator and driver sign the confirmation of readiness to load. And if this is uh, confirmed by both parties, the loading commences by VESFA's operator. VESFA's operator obviously constantly checks the operation, both optically and within the supervisor system of the truck loading facility, e.g. the loading arms uh, or holes without, are without tension, the capacity of the receiving tank is not exceeded, etc., etc. The measurement and the gas analysis are performed. The readings of the weight of the truck are performed, the truck vessel level and pressure are monitored, and the, the continuous, continuous analysis of loaded LNG with gas chromatograph is performed. After the loading, the VESPA operator performs the appropriate checks, e.g., for example, fill openings closed and blind lights attached, the ground connection removed, the pressure check in the tank, absence of leaks, of pills, and so on and so forth. The LNG loaded quantity is calculated. The quality characteristics will be automatically measured and calculated from the TLF provider system, and the delivery order is issued and handed to the driver. This, of course, includes all information according to the Greek legislation the, for the LNG loading, the quantity, and the quality uh, of the LNG loading. The LNG loaded quantity is communicated to the TLS user and the LNG user within two hours from loading and is considered in the calculation of the daily LNG reserve of the latter. Then, obviously, the 
the truck and the driver get into the ferry and return back safely to the shore. So this was, in a nutshell, the, 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 the description of our processes, of operating procedures, and we welcome any questions from our guest side.